Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Library, where Star Wars is in print, the Force is with the readers, and we finally come upon the debut of Lumaya, Dark Lady of the Sith, though we won't realize it's her in this issue of the Marvel series. I'm your host, Nathan P. Butler. The issue we're looking at this time is entitled Figurehead. It is issue number 88 of the Marvel series. Pretty cool cover there. Um, who is that masked person? It says there, Darth Vader is dead. Long live the new Dark Lord. That really doesn't look like Lumaya the way we're used to her. We'll see more about that in a moment. This is a story, of course, by Mary Jo Duffy with Bob McCloud and Tom Palmer doing the artwork, as has been the case in several recent issues. You can find this these days in the pages of Star Wars Omnibus A Long Time Ago, Volume 5, the last in this Omnibus series. Now, I've mentioned in previous episodes how, starting with the issue Diplomacy, there was this idea that we would have these characters going off on missions to make allies for the Alliance to come to this representative council kind of thing to try to set up a new government. And Luke did his back in Diplomacy and then in Still Active after all these years, the previous issue as of this point, issue 87. Han and Lando and Chewbacca wind up going off in The Hero for a mission of their own, during which time Leia is off on another mission, at least according to the hero. And the assumption tends to be that this is the mission she was on. Or maybe this is the tail end of it, because in the hero, Mon Mothma is the one talking to the others about how Luke and Leia are off on their missions, but she is actually with Leia in this issue on this mission. So what we're seeing here is not necessarily a mission that is concurrent to those stories, or if it is, it's only the end of Leia's bigger mission that is also concurrent to those stories. There's a little bit of confusion about that uh, on various websites and forums and whatnot out there, uh, not to name any names, of course. So if I say here, what we get is Leia's diplomatic mission, Leia and Mon Mothma together on a diplomatic mission. And they're on the planet Hardessa, and they're dealing with the Hardessan Guild, which pretty much runs the planet, only to wind up kind of like back in uh, what we saw with Sweetheart Contract. We wind up finding out there's something seedy under the surface, and it's a local rebellion that winds up pointing it out. Leia gets assaulted with mud by a local rebel named Suzu, winds up eventually meeting with her group, only to realize that the Hardassans are actually slavers, or they're working with slavers. And sure enough, when Leia goes off to meet with them, while Mama Mothma is still with some of the uh, diplomatic stuff that is going on, Leia winds up witnessing the other Alliance uh, personnel being rounded up, about to be sold into slavery by the leaders of this planet. Thankfully, the uh, rebel leaders wind up working with Leia because she was with them when their base was attacked. You know, they kind of have this, this bond growing. So they go in, they manage to save their comrades, save their confederates, other uh, rebels who have managed to be rounded up, that is lowercase r rebels, and the other capital R rebels, I'm about to say big case, but capital R rebels, the people here from the Alliance of Free Planets, which finally gets its name in this issue. And basically the day is saved, the slavers are stopped, the planet shall be free, or at least free of slavers, and the guild has been somewhat broken, so the rebels maybe have a chance of getting their voice heard a little bit. What's important about the story, though, is not that whole issue on Hardessa, that's local politics, and, although you could say all oh, politics is local, right, the old saying, um, but it's really not something that has huge ramifications outside of this issue. But, what does play a bigger role in the broader EU is the head of security on Hardessa, which is this individual right here in the blue, the blue helmet we saw on the cover. Our head of planetary security, this cyborg Lumaya, will do whatever is required to protect you while you are here. Lumaya? Now back then we're like, oh, Lumaya. She looks like kind of a weird cyborg type character, looks very droid-like, woohoo, whoop de freaking do. It's through Lumaya's actions that Leia learns, at first, just how uh, extreme the Hardassans are when it comes to going after these dissidents and such. Uh, she's able to fire beams from her hands and blast. Not force blasts, but actual, like, like laser-style, blaster-style beams from her hands. Leia winds up flipping her on her butt, or on her chest, I guess, uh, the way that she winds up flipping her over there. And eventually, at the end, it is Lumaya who is trying to finally wipe out the last of the dissidents as they're being hauled off, only for Leia to come out of the, the bushes, because Suzu's made it look like Leia is somewhere else, and blast Lumaya right in the chest plate here. Uh, Leia's doing a lot of damage to her on her chest, apparently, here. And turns out, by the end, Lumaya is not destroyed. She's not dead. She simply wants payback. We see her right here at the bottom, out in the bushes, where she says... Run back to your friends, little Leia. 
but you have worse things to worry about than stormtroopers. Before long, you and everyone you hold dear will learn just how pretty dangerous a foe I can be, quoting Leia as having referred to as pretty dangerous. So we get the sense that, in theory, Lumaya is coming back, but having only seen bits and pieces of her and not much in the way of force use or anything, we're really kind of like, oh goody, Lumaya is going to come back. Yay. Because this really wasn't a very compelling character when introduced in this particular story. That last little bit makes you think, is there more to her than otherwise? But then the big picture makes you say, if there's more to her than otherwise, why was she the head of planetary security on Hardessa of all places? I mean, if she really is a big bad, as they say, as a Joss Whedon fans would know, why make her out to be just uh, kind of a lowly head of security here on this backwater kind of planet? What's the deal? We'll eventually find that the reason why she's there ties into the broader plot of the Nagai and the Toffs and whatnot, and uh, sort of a resurgence of the Empire and Imperial elements like this slaving group and whatnot, sort of bringing back Imperial uh, concepts in an era in which Palpatine may be gone, but the Empire itself still lives in some form or another. They seemed a lot more beaten in the Marvel series than they did in broader EU later on. But at this point, we really have no sense of who Lumaya is, so we don't know to connect her back to Shira Bree, from the era in which David Michelinie was the main writer on the series. Though we will find that soon, coming up in the No Zeltrons and Duel with the Dark Lady 2 issue storyline. I guess it's those and then one after, I guess it's called Escape. But those two storylines are the ones that uh, finally open up the truth about who Lumaya actually is. So on that note, is this story, Figurehead, an essential read? Oh, it kind of depends. Um, it is the beginning of Lumaya's emergence. But at the same time, there's not a whole lot in this story that has a broader impact other than the idea that the Empire kind of has pawns in play again, or Imperial Remnants have pawns in play. I'm going to go ahead and say this is an essential read because of the Lumaya and the Imperial elements to it, although it's not as essential as many that we wind up having seen and will see in this uh, era of the Marvel series. So, essential for Marvel readers, I'm not sure it's essential for modern readers unless you really want every element of the Lumaya story. I think you can pick up with no Zeltrons and still be perfectly fine when it comes to Lumaya's tale. So, essential for Marvel readers, maybe, but I'm going to probably say no for modern readers this time around. Hopefully, we'll see her again soon, and these episodes will speed along to that great confrontation in no Zeltrons and Duel with a Dark Lady. With that, something to look forward to. We'll wrap up this episode. Thank you for watching, and may the Force be with the readers.